Hey guys, this is Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. And the holy grail for home gym equipment is small space, high impact. That's what this is right here. This is the Anchor Trainer. It's very small, very compact, very useful. And really the, what it takes design after is something like this. This is the free motion dual cable cross. I've said in a previous video, this is like the nicest, most over the top, heaviest, dutiest, uh, that's not a word, functional trainer that's out there. As you can see, there's a lot you can do with this because it has the actuating arms. This is something that you see in like every higher end, like lifetime fitness, you know, nice commercial gym. You rarely ever see these in a home gym. And the reason is because they're egregious in their costs. They're like six grand. They take up quite a bit of space for most people's home gyms and they're incredibly, stupidly heavy. I have a story I'll tell you sometime about how I broke my phone and my friend broke his arm the first time we bought one. I'm not kidding, that's a real story. But the problem is they take up a lot of space and they're expensive. So for a home gym, you're like, man, I want a cable machine. I don't know what to get. So there's a couple other options. One option is something like this. This is a rep fitness lat pull down that attaches to the rack. Very useful, very helpful, but it's plate loaded. This over here, this is the Rogue Rhino. This is the Coop Squat. I've talked about this before, but it like basically makes a lat pull down within a rack. But both of those options require quite a few other things, quite a bit of other space, and they're not quite as versatile in some ways as this right here, which is what we're reviewing today. The Anchor Trainer, the Anchor, I'm saying that wrong, the Anchor, Anchor. This is the Anchor Trainer. Very versatile, very small, and has some downsides which I'll talk about, but I think for a home gym, it's got a lot of upsides. So let me show you how it works. First off, there's these little pucks. These little pucks are like, I don't know what's in here. I'm guessing there's some sort of like magnet or some sort of flywheel. There's something that increasing resistance as you pull this arm away. As you can see, there's this little dial here. They connect into one into the other, and then this spins. So as you pull this cable right here, there is on this side, there's a wheel or some sort of axle that's being spun, and the farther away you go, the greater the resistance is. Very similar like a band. So a band uses what's called accommodating resistance. The farther you pull away, the harder it gets, all right? So like, this is a very similar concept, it's just using cables. Now, that is one thing that is kind of confusing about this, because they are using these little like weight increments here. These weight increments, they say like 10 pounds, and I think it's like, it gives you an idea of what's being added. However, it's not entirely truthful, because like I said, the farther away you go, the heavier it gets. So to give you an example, as I pull on this, this axle within here that this cable's wrapped around is then spinning all of these dials within the, each of these like pucks. So as I pull farther away, the heavier it gets. Now, the max weight on this, as you can see, I'm just holding this, that's how strong I am, that's like 500 pounds. But the max weight on this is 65 pounds with the pucks. But I think it's deceiving because when you're here, it may be 65 pounds, like what we have on here is 50 pounds right now. And although I'm a superhuman and 50 pounds for me is a lot less than what it is for most people, this doesn't feel that hard. However, when I pull all the way out here, it gets really heavy. This is way more than 50 pounds, which is where I think there's a benefit in the size of this trainer and the accommodating re resistance that's within here. Okay, so that's against an upright for something like a standing row, which is fine. But I think the benefit really comes in here when you take this off and put it at different heights on the upright. So, to remove it, Velcro's off, you can now put them on different cross members or different parts of the upright. So, if I was wanting to do something like a curl from the floor, I could attach it to a bottom cross member. Now, I'm able to do movements with a pulley down below. Something that really like, yeah, you can kind of simulate this with the free motion, but this is something that for like lat pull downs and like stable units, you can't really move around. So the benefit is that it's small, compact, easy to move, and easy to use. It basically allows you to have a lot of versatility in a small package. 
Now, although it's great that you can move it around, that doesn't mean like it's perfection. That doesn't mean everything about it's great. I don't think this is a perfect replacement for a lat pull down. With a lat pull down, you can go way heavier, like a weight stack, like one I've got over there, 300 pounds. Plate loaded, you can go even heavier. This one, it says 65 pounds. I think it's heavier when you're further away, but it's really not at the resistance level for most people to be at that weight. Not only that, but you can't necessarily incrementally load it like you can like a weight stack or a plate loaded lat pull down. You can do it with these little pucks, but you can only do it up to the 65 like limit that's on the pucks. So for that type of thing, it's not the greatest. The other thing is that it's really more designed for like smaller movements. But for a lot of people that are doing like one arm rows, you're doing a hundred pounds or more. So this really isn't ideal for that sort of movement, especially when you're starting to do double arm, then you want even more weight than that. So for a lot of people, that's where this kind of falls short. However, if you're wanting to use this for different movements, like let's say shoulder rotations or different rehab, prehab type stuff, it's excellent for that. It works really well, allows you to move it quickly and to get that kind of work. But the real like comparison for this, other than a functional trainer, is a Kaiser pneumatic functional trainer that uses air. The reason is because it's great for dynamic movements. It's a reason that this is used in like gyms like Mike Boyle's gym that's training a lot of athletes. This is really, I think, more designed <laughs> for these sort of movements at this time, rather than like guys that are strength training or trying to like produce a lot of hypertrophy because it's, it's just a very different feeling resistance than something like a weight stack or plate loaded. Now here's the biggest downside to this that I really haven't touched on and you're all gonna ask questions about and that is the price. This is not cheap. Everybody I ask, I give like, hey, what do you think this is? Almost every time they're like around 200, 250, maybe 300 bucks. But no, it's pretty much double that. This and this handle, Velcro strap, is $550. $550 bucks for this, what you see right here. That is not cheap. That is very expensive. That is 550 Big Macs. Actually, Big Macs are not $1. That's 550 sweet teas you could drink. Think about the amount of sugar that would be. Okay, but basically it's like, that's an egregious cost. It's just very expensive for this unit that has that amount of weight. And then if you want two, because you really will, because you wanna be doing stuff like this so you get huge juicy pecs, or stuff like this so you get massive meaty triceps, or stuff like this so you can build a barn door back, you gotta spend double that. It's like 1,050 bucks shipped to your door and that's where I think the value to the cost, like scenario, right? Like what it's provided versus how much it costs, it doesn't fully line up. I love this device as a concept. I love what it can potentially do. I love the form factor and I love how it can be used. But for most home gym owners, it's way too expensive. It's just too expensive. Also, it's not like, it's not the most refined. It's still very much a version 1.0, a beta. So you can see here, that's not even etched. It's just a sticker. Everybody knows I hate stickers, but there's just stickers on here. You know, it's just like, it kind of feels like a little bit like a DIY project, which is great because this is like an earlier idea. Here's what I say about Anchor. I think this could be very special as they decrease the price and increase the load over time. At this point, I still think for most home gym owners, there are many better options out there. I think this could be incredible. If you could get the price down and increase the weight, I could see these in so many different home gyms because they're so small, take up so little space, it could be so versatile. All right, that's my take on Anchor. What do you think? Was that, was that honest? Was it like good on both sides? Would you get one? Let me know in the comments. We'll see you next time. Peace.